So this video shows you how to use one of the Vericut models that I have saved um, for your labs. Uh, basically these are contained in the course folder which you know how to get to. Um, and you will of course have written your own GNM code that you will then link into the simulation and run it. So right now what you see in front of you is Vericut which I've just opened up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the file menu and um, navigate to the folder, the course folder, so that I can load up uh, the model that has been saved there. So you should have somewhere in your list of folders um, the eTech uh, 322 folder and um, you want to go into the course materials subfolder, the verification subfolder, and then the Haas VF2 models. And then in here you can see a bunch of uh, folders, each one with a different uh, model depending on what you're doing. Um, what I want to look at today, well, what you want to look at is Lab 4. So let's go into the Lab 4 folder. And you'll see that there are two setups here, Setup 1, Setup 2. Um, that's because for Lab 4 you have to machine both sides of the part, and there's a setup model there for each. So I'm going to click on the first uh, setup and hit the Open button, so Vericut will load up that model. It'll take a minute or two to do that. Actually, not that long, a couple of seconds, I hope. And there you go, you see the Vericut model. Um, this here is a model of our Haas VF2 machine. You can see the vise with the workpiece set up on top of it. Uh, this here is a shot of the workpiece only. Um, so you have this two view, this two pane view to work with. If you go over here to the uh, tree, you'll notice that if we expand out the Y axis, you'll see that the X axis is mounted on the Y axis. And then if you expand out the x-axis and go into attach, you'll see that there's um, three things here, fixture, stock, and the design. And the fixture is the curt vise. You can see the box that shows you the extent of the vise. The stock, which is the gold-colored shape. And then uh, the design, this is um, the final shape that we want to machine from the block. So having the design in the model allows you to compare the machined result to the design to see if you've left any material or if you have actually gouged apart. Um, now what you want to do once you have the model loaded is to load your own program. Uh, to do this what you will do is go under NC programs down here in the project tree. Right now there isn't any program loaded um, so what you would do is click on NC programs and down here on the button bo bottom, you have a button here that asks you to add an NC program. So I'm going to click on this. And uh, this window that pops up allows you to navigate to where you have uh, saved um, your code. Now, I would strongly advise you to save the code in the same folder that you have the Vericut models. So you're probably going to copy the model over from the course folder into your own folder on your Z drive and then just simply copy in the text files um, that contain the GNM code that you're going to simulate. Um, in my case, these files are located elsewhere, so I'm going to just navigate to the location um, over here. So obviously it's going to be very different for you. And base 1 is the program that I'm going to be simulating. So I'm going to select it and then hit uh, the right arrow here to load it up and then hit the OK button. So now I've loaded up the program. You can see it over here, base1.txt. And now I'm ready to simulate. So I'm going to just uh, make sure I can see the part. Down here on the right, of course, is your um, play button. You can, of course, use the uh, button to the left to single step to each command. I'm going to just play it right through. Um, the simulation speed, I'm going to keep it somewhat low so you can see what's happening. So the dial pin comes down. Um, the left side of the part was end milled. Two lifted up to the right side. And then, as you can see, a chamfer was machined around the outside. So you've seen this already. This was the demonstration lab. And of course, this is what you're going to be machining when you do your own lab in week four. So that's the first setup. I'm going to also load up the second setup so that you can see the result there. So I'm going to go back to the open menu. I'm going to just ignore all changes here. 
takes a second to bring up the file search window. I'm going to go back to the ETEC uh, 322 course folder and on the lab 4 I'm going to load up the second setup. Again, takes a few seconds to load up. So this is what you need to do to make sure that the program you have written yourself um, is correct. Okay, so there we go. Um, we've loaded up the second setup. So this is when that same part is flipped around. So you've machined the first setup. Now you're flip, flipping it around. You're going to machine the underside. This is where, of course, all the work is, or most of the work. Um, so again, you can see on the left side here the full machine view. The right side, the vise with the um, works uh, workpiece and the stock, which is the purple color. If you come over to the tree, we can actually hide our stock if you want to see what the um, what the final design part looks like. So this is what one is shooting for. Over here, I'm going to bring back the stock. Seems to be a bit stubborn here for some reason. Let's see, visibility. There we go, boat views. Um, so again, just like what I did for the first setup, I have to go to the NC programs and I have to add an NC program file. And again, I'm going to have to search for mine because it's not obviously in the folder where the model is that you will be loading. Here it is under lab, sorry, lab four. So it's base two. I'm going to select it here and then use the right arrow to load it up or indicate that I want to load it. Hit OK. So the program is now loaded up into Veracut. Uh, the first uh, setup went a little bit fast. I'm going to really slow this down so we can see what happens during machining of the second setup. Um, so I'm going to hit the play button. And what you will see is the dowel pin will load up. Now normally the part isn't there, so imagine the part not there, the dial pin coming down and locating it. Here I have end milling, which machines the step as well as these two islands, or pockets, sorry. Center drilling, drilling, tapping, and then finally chamfer oper operation using the large um, basing mill. And the program is done. One of the things that you'd probably want to do um, is to compare your machine part to your design part because you do have the design part in loaded up here as you can see. So to do this you want to use the auto diff feature which is up here on your toolbar. So I'm going to click the auto diff feature. Uh, there are different ways to compare. There are two modes actually. There's the solid comparison mode and then the surface comparison mode. The solid comparison mode just shows uh, material that you take away that you shouldn't, gouge material as red, and um, it shows excess material as blue. Um, so let's look at um, this first. Let's do a compare using this mode. And what we see here is that what's left um, is um, material that, um, that in, the, in the tapping operation or the treading operation, as well as the fact that we probably didn't go deep enough with our depth, so there's a little bit of material left at the bottom of the hole. Um, so there's, a, there's actually no excess material, just a little bit of gouging. Now the gouging for tapping is understandable because um, you don't have the ability to put treads in and vericut, so it's actually removing the material all the way to the root of the tread, and that's why it shows up as red. The other option for comparison is to go to the surface option, and this gives you a whole bunch of different colors that actually shows you in more detail the difference um, for different regions of the model as far as um, the amount of material that's left. Um, so you, you may see a little bit here, but this is not a really good part that sh to show you the range of differences of left material. This is better done using, um, in the case of surfacing, for example, where you may have peaks and valleys left uh, due to the milling operation. Um, you can make out some different colors in here, but it's not very clear. So you should use Autodiff to at least tell you if you have material left 
or if you've gouged a part. Um, the other thing to um, bear in mind when you're running Veracut is to be careful that nothing turns red. Normally if something turns red you'll get a message down here in the bottom window that might tell you that you have a fast feed rate or that you've collided with the vise um, either with the tool or with the tool holder. Anything that turns red, uh, any warning message that, that appears down here, you have to really fix that before you uh, are allowed to run the program on the machine. So um, this is the first uh, example, the first uh, part that you're going to be machining on the lab. Good luck with this um, um, simulation. Um, hopefully this shows you how to set it up and to run your own program.